On today's episode of Cheating When Love Lies. You're in a bad relationship. You've tried to make it work, but you're still very, very unhappy. You're easily tempted to have an affair with someone who love bombs you. That's someone who showers you with attention, gifts, compliments, and promises for the future. This love bomber appears to be in love with you, and you get completely swept up. In some cases, you agree to marry, live with, or even have children with your suitor, because isn't this what love is meant to feel like? Hmm. Fast forward, and you discover it wasn't love, but an obsession, and this person who paid so much attention to you actually turns into your stalker. And what about when your partner's extramarital lover stalks you? Now not only do you have to contend with your partner's affair, but also having their lover stalk you. On this episode, I welcome Jamie Beebe and Jake Deptula, hosts of Strictly Stalking, to talk about when cheating leads to stalking. Strictly Stalking is a true crime podcast hosted by Jamie Beebe and Jake Deptula. The show highlights true life stalking stories from survivors in their own words. Thank you both for coming to Cheating When Love Lies to talk about how and when stalking can stem from cheating and affairs. Thanks so much for having us. Yeah, of course, Jillian. Thank you. Thank you. So I had a guest and her lover was a married man. And the wife found out that her husband was cheating the wife started, quote, stalking me. What point does research surveillance become stalking? This woman allegedly was looking at her social media, following what she was doing. Is that really stalking? I mean, I think there's a fine line there. You know, even when you're just trying to learn about somebody, you're going to look through their social media. You're going to You know, check all their stories on Instagram and see what they're doing that moment. I think that's normal. I think it's normal to want to learn about somebody. But I think that it crosses the line when, you know, you're showing up, you're contacting them unwantedly. I mean, I think that's number one is if you're contacting that person and they don't want you to contact them, then you're doing something wrong. You're stalking them. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, if you're showing up, if you're really actually, you know, surveilling them, Mm -hmm. um, if it becomes something where you know, you're hitting refresh on their Instagram all day long. I mean, that, you know, you have a problem. That's not a correct way of thinking. Mm -hmm. Once infidelity is suspected in most relationships Mm -hmm. that people have told me about, the Mm -hmm. investigation starts right away. So literally they will jump in. You know, it's a small percentage to actually hire a private investigator, but that does happen. Mm -hmm. So I think that there's a layer of, as as you both just mentioned, in terms Mm -hmm. of the fine line, between the investigation part and the stalking part. And so it's like finding out you want to know the truth and you sort of get obsessed with finding this out, especially if your lover or significant other is lying. Or lying. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's normal to go check up on people. Yeah. We do that all day long in every aspect (laughs) of our lives. That's why we have social media, right? But it's frightening because depending on what state you live in and we're in the U.S., some of these things are illegal, like throwing your phone in the back of your lover's car could be considered illegal, if I'm correct, in certain states. I mean, if you're doing that to track someone, then yeah, like that's that's stalking. That's wrong. If you're doing the extra things to like actually keep tabs on somebody, then then yeah, like that's stalking. Well, that's interesting that you said that's wrong. So if I think it's morally wrong, <laughs> you think it's morally wrong. That's right. interesting. Do you agree with that, Jake? So I'm married. My husband's cheating. And I think he has a girlfriend. I'm asking him. He's not being forthcoming, but he has all the behaviors. He stays out late at night. He hides the phone in bed, all the things that you and I know. I say, you know what? I'm going to throw my phone in the back of the car and track this guy. Is that morally wrong? Is that stalking? It depends on your morals, number one, your morals and ethics. But the second thing is that, you know, stalking defined as harassment, Mm. basically unwanted attention, unwanted uh, Mm. behavior that's, you know, going into your direction. Mm -hmm. Most people that are cheating or suspected cheating probably wouldn't want that. I mean, to be fair, most people wouldn't want that sort of intrusion in their life, whether Mm -hmm. they're cheating or not. Mm -hmm. So I think that every, obviously, every single state and every single community has Mm -hmm. their own sort of laws on the books, right? Mm -hmm. What is stalking behavior? Right. But I do know most people, when they suspect 
infidelity. Right. It's straight to social media. It's straight to like straight investigative. To Everybody's an armchair, armchair detective when yep. it comes to infidelity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I also had a case. This woman didn't agree to come on of the opposite. What does this woman do? So her husband's having an affair. She's been married to him for 20, 30 years. She's madly in love with this guy, madly and desperately in love with her husband. She's more mature, like my age, and the husband has a 25, 30-year-old lover. So that augments her despair because she feels very, very threatened by this younger woman. The younger woman starts to text her and go on her social media with taunting photos of her with her husband. What do you do? Like, is that stalking? And what does the wife do? I mean, I guess that could be... That, that's on the line. You know, that's kind of a form of stalking. I think it's more harassment at that point. It depends on what the wife has done. Has she asked this person to stop contacting her? Has she confronted mm. the husband? Is she going to leave the husband? I mean, I think that there's a lot going on where the wife needs to make some serious decisions. Like, if she loves the guy and doesn't mind that he's cheating on her, then cool, stay and tell the tell the girl to stop contacting her. And then if she doesn't stop contacting her, then it becomes something more serious and you can go to the police. But... I mean, if she's just, you know, ignoring it or not responding or responding back and they're having conversations. Mm -hmm. That's what happened. She started responding and they started going back and forth. Then the other girl doesn't realize that she's not supposed to contact her unless she's told. I think that's an interesting insight to simply start by telling the other person it's unwanted. We had a case on our show where the ex-husband ended up dating a woman, a younger version Mm-hmm. of this Instagram model. Mm-hmm. And the Instagram model, the younger version, would pose in photos very similar to the ones that his ex-wife put out into the world and would send those to her and basically sort of use that as a as a sort of stalking way to humiliate taunting. her. Taunting. Exactly, taunting, in, in yeah. that way. This particular thing, I do have to ask a question if you know this, what kind of boundaries does this couple have? Because in this case, obviously, it, it comes through as like taunting. It comes through like, okay, I'm going to send this to you to make you jealous or right. bring up envy. Correct. Do they have an open relationship? No! Do they have So no! literally, okay. No. <laughs> she is like, I I'm fully going... got the not open Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank not. you so much. Hell no. <laughs> yeah, she's like, I want to murder this girl. Not literally, but she was irate. And felt so taunted and so debased, you know, because, of course, the girl's gorgeous and he's taking her on a weekend and it was awful. So I was just interested in knowing if in that case the lover is stalking the wife. I mean, I think it could turn into that. I think mm-hmm. that it's, you know, it starts out with a little bit of harassment and like, you mm-hmm. know, the pictures and the taunting and it could easily turn into that. I mean, and if you look at the side of the girl – the younger girl, I mean, obviously there's jealousy there or something. Otherwise, why would she even reach out in the first place if she was secure, right? Interesting. Okay. So, I mean, she already point. has some – something is going right. on in her head. She's scared the husband's not going to leave the wife. Right. Okay. So let's talk about two episodes on your podcast, season two, episode 90. Wow. What happened on this episode? This particular scenario was one guy – that had stalked multiple women and those women connected Mm. through social media, through other aspects and realized they were being stalked by the same person. So Mm -hmm. they ended up developing a a friendship Mm -hmm. and sort of an alliance against this guy. So, you know, similar to many things when people are like posting on social media, be be aware of this guy, don't date this guy, Mm -hmm. things like that. This is what was happening with the stalker. So these two women are two of the eight women and there possibly could be more by this point. Um, who had formed an alliance against this guy. So they ended up connecting and getting out there and sharing their story with us. But I think that happens a lot because stalkers don't stop stalking. Like they will stalk until they're dead in prison or they find a new victim. So it makes sense that he would just go from girl to girl and continue stalking. You can't rehabilitate a stalker. I'm, I believe that you possibly can I mean, I haven't seen that in our studies quite yet. I think it's an addiction. I think it's like any, you know, like other types of addictions Mm -hmm. um, in some forms. And then in some cases, it's a mental illness. Um, In some cases, you know, they just get so obsessed. You know, it's that, that addictive personality. And so I think that there is ways to rehabilitate, to help people. You know, I don't think people realize what stalking really 
is and how to help somebody from it. And also, you know, the stalker would have to go and ask for help Mm -hmm. in most cases. Mm -hmm. And then expose themselves. Right. And now a word from our sponsor. AG1, everybody. Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. I started taking AG1 because I want an easier way to look and feel healthier and protect my immune system. I keep taking AG1 because it's an incredibly efficient and good-tasting way to achieve those goals. With one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens. It's summer, and I'm on the move. I travel with my AG1 because it's such an easy, convenient way to stay healthy. And it contains less than one gram of sugar. No GMOs, no gross chemicals, or artificial stuff that's so against what I want to put in my body. And with more than 7,000 five-star reviews, I feel confident choosing AG1. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash cheating. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash cheating to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. What were the behaviors that this particular stalker had? Did he have any sort of very peculiar behavior that made him so identifiable? He was in within the small community and he had sort of infiltrated like the dating community there Mm -hmm. in terms of that. So there's a certain like, for lack of a better term, playbook, basically in terms of like unwanted phone calls, texts, uh, possibly visits, um, gifts, things like that. Like once a relationship is ended, they just keep coming back. When you say, I don't want this, I, and you're basically setting up your boundaries and mm-hmm. saying, I don't want you to contact me, and they mm-hmm. still keep going. Mm-hmm. They still keep sending gifts. They still text. They still call. They mm-hmm. still the, – These are this is a very fine line when it comes to stalking and what would be considered a general pursuit of someone. Mm-hmm. Well, and I think relationships are cyclical. So what he does in one relationship – Unless he gets therapy and changes, he's going to do the exact same thing in the next relationship. I think that we see that throughout any relationships that you're in. So, Jamie, particularly to you as a woman, I don't know if you're single or married. I'm not asking. Very single. Oh, very single. Join the club. Okay. Put my number at the end of the episode. (laughs) I always say to women, we have to talk to each other about the people we date. Don't you feel like women are very secretive? Like, I don't want anyone to know who I'm dating. I do think that women are secretive. I mean, in my cases, like, I've dated some really horrible people. I've dated, you know, I've been in abusive relationships and super secretive about that. And I think that Why most, did you do that? Why were you secretive? Because it's shameful. You know, it's okay. just like shocking. Or stalking is shameful, too. And so a lot of people don't talk about it when it, it shouldn't be shameful. It's not your fault. But I think society gives women this idea, like, if someone treats you badly, it's your fault. When it's it's not. But right. You're think, weak. You're right, insecure. Right. You're and so, tolerant. of course, you hide mm-hmm. that. I used to tell everybody I knew, oh, my boyfriend was so amazing. <gasps> and then go home and he was a terrible person, you know? Like, he was abusive mentally, physically, cheating on me. And But I told – posted every day on Instagram how much <gasps> I loved him and everything because I didn't want people to know, right? So that's very similar to what I'm sure happens with stalking. My female friends, when they ask me for my perspective on something, whether mm-hmm. it be dating advice or whether it be uh, safety within the relationship, red flags, things like mm-hmm. that, what I notice is that a lot of times that, as Jamie mentioned, they want to put the best foot forward because they don't always want questions because once you put some sort of you know, question in someone's head like there may be a problem in the relationship, mm. that sometimes tends to take the forefront because your friends and your family, they love you, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, Hopefully. Mm-hmm. And they end up wanting to know you're safe and you're happy. Mm-hmm. And so you know, social media is one presentation and then internally you just don't want those qu- – well, how are things going between you two? How are mm-hmm. things – you know, that kind of thing. So you tend to want to disguise that and so many of our cases are like that. They end up putting the best foot forward – 
whether they're in the most severe stalking because they don't mm-hmm. want to also include those around them. They yes. don't want to get them involved and a lot of times they are. A mm-hmm. lot of times the stalker will turn to their friends, their family, their next significant other and it's a very horrible situation and they feel unfortunately responsible. They're not but they feel very guilty oftentimes about bringing – this stalker into their lives and how it so impacts families others. families' lives. Exactly. Yeah. Well, let's talk about that. Stalking Lucy, Season 2, Episode 96. Holy cow. Two police officers and the woman's police officer husband was stalking her? Please explain that because that just seems implausible. Lucy was a recruit within the police department and she ended up meeting a superior and they ended up you know, getting along. They ended up dating – And he was a very well-respected and very well-known person. If you look at the fabric of that relationship, Mm. many lines were crossed very early, like in terms of him being a superior, him being within that division that they started dating. I mean, they had to keep that relationship under wraps, you know, for for a very long time. So there's already going into it, there was already that weight and that pressure. So Mm -hmm. knowing that you could kind of set up sort of a concealment of that was good for him. Yeah, it was a me too. Right? This is kind of like a me too. Pretty much. I mean, I think that there was a lot of red flag. Looking back, of course, you can't see Uh, a red flag when you're in it. But looking back, I mean, there were so many red flags in that. Like, it had to be kept secret. He's your superior. I mean, it, like, those two things are huge. Like, if your relationship has to be kept a secret, then you don't have a relationship. And who is she supposed to turn to? Uh You know, in terms of anything that goes goes wrong, who is she supposed to turn to if it's the actual a superior in the police department that she's dating and when she's trying to get away from. And again, his reputation was stellar. So he love bombs her and I think they get married or move in together in a very, very short period of they time. They married. Yeah, she had the ick but married him anyway. She was concerned. She marries the guy. Let's fast forward to the part where he's stalking her. How does that happen? How does a police officer stalk a police officer? And the larger question is, Can women and men who are in relationships consider their significant other as a stalker? Yes. Um, Your significant other can definitely be a stalker. Um, And that happens a lot. We see that all the time. I think it happens very slowly. Um, You don't just come out one day and you're like, oh, I'm I'm being stalked today. Mm. Like it happens one step at a time. It's kind of like when you go on a diet and you lose weight. Like you don't notice when you lose one or two pounds. You notice Mm. when you lose 10 and Mm. then you lose 20. Mm. And then, you, Mm. you know, you notice the big things. Right. And so every day it's just a tiny, tiny bit more. Like he, you know, started controlling the finances. But it was for the better good. You know, he was going to buy property for them and stuff. And and so – but then she couldn't buy things because he was controlling the money. And then he was controlling – when she went to the gym, um, you know, he didn't want – he didn't like her, her body how when she was going to the gym. And then um, – So what did he do about that? He didn't want he, her to be at the her, gym? He got her a home gym. Okay. So he started isolating her. And the isolation oh. part is – And that's so devious because everyone looking is saying, oh, he got her a home gym. Right. He's such a great guy. But you're saying the true intent behind that was to keep her was out of the public gym. Her. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, and that's so that other people can't look in and be like, oh, this relationship is not going well. Like, mm-hmm. they, So no one can actually tell her. Mm-hmm. And so it's just all these little things where he started – you know, isolation is a, is a – big one. And you don't notice it at first. You really, really don't. You know, it can be like my ex used to tell me that my friends were really bad influences on me. Just full transparency. My friends are both lawyers. Mm -hmm. (laughs) They're they're like like 50 year old lawyers that own their own homes. They're really not a bad influence on me. Um, But my ex used to tell me that every day. Well, they're they're really bad influences. I don't think you should hang out with them. And after hearing it over and over, you're like, oh, yeah, I guess so, you know, because it's this person that lives with you that they're telling you this every day. When you hear something every day, you start to believe it, internalize it and believe it. Internalize yeah. it. Yeah, you're right. And so mm-hmm. you don't realize that you're just simply being isolated so that no one can help you. Mm-hmm. So she was isolated. You brought up a very good point. She was financially stalked, too. Mm-hmm. I heard her use that term. What does that mean? The coercive relationship that they had where he was literally in control of every single one of her moves. Financially, she couldn't buy anything. She couldn't order anything. She couldn't do anything. He was in control of everything. Like he monitored her bank statements. He went through the whole gamut. So literally, even though she's making money, he is in control of that. They were in a position where, again, him being a superior and you look at this from this standpoint, we've had cases on where there's police officers – or there's military. Mm. They know 
Mm-hmm. Surveillance. Right. They know surveillance yeah. above all. Uh, GPS, yeah. uh, sort of uh, mm-hmm. cyber hacking, uh, things that they're trained to do. Not all, but mm-hmm. sometimes. And so if you can imagine that scenario mm-hmm. and then physically being trapped within the confines of your own home. Now, you had mentioned this before. It sounds like an ideal situation. Oh, he's basically making the home so comfortable and so convenient for her. Mm -hmm. Exactly the opposite. Mm -hmm. He's forbidding her basically and controlling her from getting out into the world, which by in turn looking at what else is out there. Now, how pervasive is this? And we're not putting any blame clearly on Lucy. She was treated horribly and she really emerged very successfully. What she did was rather heroic. How would you respond to some who might say, hey, Lucy, if the guy's not letting you buy toothpaste and he won't let you out of the house, get it together? How would you respond to those people? Well, I mean, I think that's the thing with the isolation. Nobody really knew that that was going on. And so, sure, she had a bad feeling inside and she knew that 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 was wrong. Mm. And, you know, and even later on, he was taking small amounts of money out of her account so she wouldn't notice that the money was gone until it was all gone. Um, and so I think that with the isolation, there is no one to tell you that. There is no one that comes up and says, oh, hey, you know, this is wrong. And then also, you know, she's not out there telling people what's going on either. So mm-hmm. you really – it's it's that isolation and that's, that's the number one thing that they use against you. Mm-hmm. How far are you willing to go to protect what you perceive of love? Great. Yeah. That's the bottom line Great is answer. literally mm-hmm. isolating that to the point of mm-hmm. wanting to project all is well. Right. Little by little, you're going to say, well, if I just tolerate this, things will get better. If I just tolerate that, things will get better. Well, and I think women, too, you know, we're taught to, like, what pick our battles and, like, mm-hmm. what do what yeah. can, what do we want to stand up for? Because you can't stand up for everything against a man. So, like, if he cheats on you, you can stand up against that. But if he takes all your money, maybe not that. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yes. I think that society teaches women something, you know, along those lines where, like, for some reason we have to just pick what, what battles – that we want to engage in. Otherwise, we're going to be difficult, you know. And in this case with Lucy, was he cheating on her? I know that he accused her when she wasn't. He, but he What? Tell me about that. Yeah. He, he basically flipped it on her, if I'm not mistaken. Like he went through a situation where he had accused her of cheating basically to cover up his own infidelity. Mm. Which I think happens in a lot of relationships. Mm-hmm. How often do stalking and cheating go hand in hand? Um. I think I think that they they definitely correlate. I think there's a correlation there mm-hmm. because you know the stalker is always going to be looking for the next victim. It's it's in their makeup. You know, it's kind of who they are, and so that obsession. They're going to be looking for the next victim, especially if they feel that the person they're stalking is you know if it's a relationship thing that the right. person they're stalking is starting to pull away, anything like that. They're going to be looking for another victim, and they also want to show everybody out there how great they are. So. Cheating does that. You know, it gives them another person to sit there and be like, you're so wonderful and Mm -hmm. you're great. Now, what about law enforcement? So let's turn it to the wife. The wife is unhinged and she's accusing her husband of cheating, but maybe she's actually cheating. She's becoming abusive and he goes to law enforcement. What happens in those scenarios? Are they saying, listen, people, your partners or you're married, work it out? What happens? I mean, it's interesting if the if the guy we've found that if the guy goes to law enforcement, a lot of times they're immediately blamed. Well, what did you do to this woman to make her stalk you? Hmm. And I mean it happens with women too. I just think it's a little bit different with men. It's like the good old boys club. Like, hmm. oh, you must have really given it to her good if she's right. stalking you. You know, they make a joke it's more jokey. It's more hmm. like, Oh, she's stalking you because she likes you. Like women are, you know, crazy anyway. And and so mm-hmm. when you're going in and you're talking to another man about it. A lot of times they don't take it seriously because mm-hmm. it's just a woman. Like, what's she going to do to you? Right? Okay. Okay. And, well, what is she going to do to you? Do you have examples of when that didn't go so well? Oh, your favorite one, Jake. Nightclub stalker. Nightclub stalker. <laughs> go for it. So, basically, there was this DJ and he was popular around the Hollywood nightclubs. Okay. And this woman came in and started, you know, following his – his uh, his performances, you mm-hmm. know, she would like show up. She would basically volunteer to kind of create a sort of a, a promotional fan club for him. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, she ended up showing up at every one of his performances. She knew the club. She sort of saturated into his life mm-hmm. and his lifestyle. So she ends up 
confronting him and basically, you know, following him, social media, uh, promoting him, basically kind of becoming someone who he had to sort of lean on in order to kind of promote and, and things like that. Mm-hmm. So, um, but she ends up her ulterior motive. She ends up getting jealous. Like he was, had a really good relationship with uh, the woman who they call the door girl, mm-hmm. who was there at the club, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden. The woman who was the promoter became unhinged and ends up confronting him at night when he's leaving the club, this and that. Um, It got so bad that he ends up – she ends up sending him a chainsaw in the mail and says, I hope you like the power tool. So this is literally one of those fabrics where the guy, he couldn't even DJ for a while. So she ended up preventing him from getting out there doing this. She literally became unhinged. And remember, she ended up saturating everybody. So she knew she had the email addresses, the phone numbers of all the club people, everything. So when he was going to appear somewhere, she would be there. What happened with law enforcement? Because that's where we started this. What did law enforcement do? I think that's interesting because law enforcement blamed him. Right away. Like, oh, well, you must have dated her, which he didn't. Um, You know, you must have done something to her to make her want to do this. But then the other side of that is he's he's a man. She's a woman. So if she comes up to him in public on public street and attacks him and he tries to defend himself. Right. He's at risk. He's at risk because the general public is going to defend her. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because so there's really it's a lose lose situation for him. Mm -hmm. Like he he has no recourse there. It's really difficult. And he would call. The cops would come out and, you know, they they wouldn't take it seriously right. because it's a woman against What happened man. in the end? Well, the fact that she was also stalking his friend who oh, was gosh. the door girl. Oh, yeah. We didn't mention yeah. that part, did we? Oh, geez. Uh, okay. So she ended up stalking multiple people. Those were the two main ones was Keith and Maisie mm-hmm. on, on the show. Multiple people within his circle. Within mm-hmm. his circle, yeah. Okay. So, so basically, but – with all the intention of getting access to him. Right. So literally okay. once she couldn't get access to him, she, she went would around. turn. Exactly. Well, exactly. Okay. So she ended up showing up public places. Did she go to jail? She went to a mental institution. Oh. Yeah. She ended up okay. – I yeah. She ended up getting some help. OK. Uh, mental health help mm-hmm. in that context. But um, no, she didn't, she didn't necessarily um, serve any time or anything like that. But she did Very get – Very few stalkers serve time. How do you nip it in the bud? Say you're in a relationship, there's cheating and affairs involved, the lover, like we said in the beginning, starts stalking the spouse, or the spouse starts stalking the lover. How do you nip it in the bud? Are there two or three things that you can do to at least prevent it from moving forward, or is it just impossible? I mean, I think it really depends on the situation, but, you know, you listen to your gut and you set your boundaries. And once your boundaries are set, those are your boundaries. So, and also, you know, you do have to be the squeaky wheel. You do have to call the cops. You do, you do have to, you know, get out there. You have to tell people. You have to have a support system. You have to be prepared to leave the relationship. And once Mm -hmm. you leave, that's, that's it. So, when they recontact you after you told them not to, you call the cops every time. You make a um, a notebook and write down every single thing. I mean, you really have to become your own advocate mm-hmm. so that you don't get hurt. So that you know, it's it's a game of cat and mouse. It's you know, murder in slow motion. And do you make the person aware of what you're doing? Well, they'll know if you call the cops. But do you tell them I'm writing this down? I'm documenting this. I'm telling my mom. Or do you think that will inflame the stalker? Well, I mean, and that's a thing, especially with intimate partner relationships, yes. um, is because once you give them those kind of like threats, I guess, mm-hmm. that becomes more dangerous for you, right? Right. But you do oh need to gosh. make sure that they know that you, this is unwanted attention. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think that – I think you have to, you know, re- read the situation for that. Um, obviously, if your stalker – Slash ex-husband is standing in front of you with a knife. You're not going to be like, well, I'm telling my mom. I'm <laughs> right. telling the cops. Right, right, you know. Yeah. But, I mean, definitely get authorities involved. Get other people involved. Get your support system involved. Get your friends and family involved. Um, just so that they know what's going on. So if your stalker shows up at your work, then security knows and they will escort him out. You know, you I need see. to just be aware. Two more questions. One, what if you're... 
unfairly accused of stalking? What if you're unfairly deemed unhinged or crazy, as women often are, simply because you want to find out if your partner is cheating, if your spouse is cheating? You're taking steps to surveil them to get answers. And the person that you're monitoring turns around and says, you're stalking me. What do you do? I mean, again, like, I think it's boundaries and what what you want from your life. Like, at at this point in my life, I'm 44 years old. If I'm dating somebody and I think that they're cheating on me, I'm done. I'm out. I don't Mm -hmm. care. That's my boundary. So, But wouldn't you have to investigate a little bit? You might have to do two or three little investigations. I I think I can rely on my gut, to be honest. Really? Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, no, I'm not questioning your yeah. gut, but I'm saying, no, the <laughs> really no, I, was I like, do. so you're going to give a charming, fabulous guy without any data to support your gut, because I'm all into the gut. I totally believe in the gut feeling. I, I do at this point in my life, yeah. You wouldn't need any data to support it. I mean, I think that if I feel it, then there's a reason. Okay. You know, and if I go look for it, I'll find it, because I think if you're going to go look for something, regardless of what it is, okay. you will find something. Okay. So if you're already looking, you're already out, right? You could be wrong. You could be mistaken. True. But why? Not you. Everybody but, else. But, no, but, but, then, <laughs> no, yeah. but then why are you feeling like that? There's, there's no, some I, kind of trust problem. There's some kind of problem. I agree with you. I'm very into gut. I live my life a lot on a gut feeling, which is you're right, which is why you might investigate. But I'm curious about how we deem that poor person that's just like, well, before I throw the baby out with the bathwater, sure. I want to do some fact checking. And now I'm the one that's made to look bad. Like I was the stalker. How do you respond? This is, this is interesting because it sounds like there could be some gaslighting involved in these scenarios. Or someone is deemed to be unhinged, be crazy, be someone who does not have the capacity. Because again, let's be honest, if you're emotional and you're reactive Mm -hmm. and you turn to somebody and say, you see what I'm talking about here? She Mm -hmm. can't keep it together. She's (laughs) accusing me of this and this and like that's what a stalker can do. That's what somebody who gaslights does. That's what the manipulation factor. So that's another thing to very watch out for is don't always assume – like people when they turn to the police, oftentimes they're not like, okay, well, I'm going to tell you my exact uh, tale of the day. So I was almost uh, uh, murdered today and uh, I'm not going to – you know, nobody's like that. Nobody's like that. Like everybody goes in emotional and that's one of the things too Mm, is – Police have to be responsive to that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think Mm -hmm. another thing um, that kind of hits on that is a lot of stalkers will accuse their victims of stalking them. And they'll actually Mm -hmm. go to the police first Mm -hmm. because they know that they are actually the Mm -hmm. stalker, but they'll turn it around and Mm -hmm. go to the police first. And then it's, what do you do as the victim? You're being accused of stalking, even Mm -hmm. though you're not. It's really difficult. Mm -hmm. But that's why, you know, we always say keep keep a, a log of every little thing that happens Mm -hmm. everything like there's a bump in the night you wake up and you write it down like i heard Mm -hmm. a knock on my window i got a phone call where they hung up i got a text from number i didn't know everything what tends to bring a lot of our guests who are stalking survivors comfort is to be able to know where their stalker is Mm -hmm. so oftentimes they have Mm -hmm. to turn the table using technology are mm-hmm. using a variety of things that they either reveal or don't reveal in the show in order to feel that level of comfort. As you just said, the anticipation of what's going to happen next. But wait, so you're saying that they'll get that technology and say, you know where I am? Well, guess what? I know where you are. Exactly. Get out. I, I mean, it's, it. a, it's a safety issue. Love it. You want to know if your stalker is in your home state, if your stalker is in your town. You and need to know. You know, most people do try to keep an eye on their stalker because – you know, if your stalker is posting online that they're outside your house, then you, you want to know. Right. Okay. Interesting. I know that hosting Cheating When Love Lies has definitely affected how I view relationships, both positively and negatively. How has hosting more than 100 episodes of Strictly Stalking affected both of you and how you see relationships how you view potential stalking, and for our purposes, stalking in the context of cheating? Well, I think that it has um, changed me a lot. So I got out of that horrible relationship right before uh, – right right when we launched Strictly Stalking. Um, 
And so, so many episodes were really triggering for me. Mm. And I didn't realize why I was getting so upset. Like, I would be interviewing somebody and they'd be talking about their domestic abuse and their cheating. And I I would literally be like, I know what this person's going to say next. Like, why am I so triggered by this? Like, this sucks. And I would be, you know, kind of standoffish and cold because Mm. I'm just like, I know everything that's happening because I was in this domestic violent relationship, you know? And so it actually has helped me so much. It's helped me, like, heal and realize you know, what I went through and, you know, what it took to come out of that. And that now, you know, going full circle that I can help other people, you know, I I think that it's helped me a lot to go through all these episodes, especially the ones that deal with cheating and, um, you know, violence, domestic violence and things like that. And then on the same time, like with that healing part, like I have pretty strict boundaries with people that I get into relationships with at this point. Yeah, you and, were saying that you're pretty much like, if I get the ick, you're out. Yeah, I, I will leave at, at the job. And I'm not saying that's a great thing to do, mm-hmm. but I'm also fine by myself. I, you know, mm-hmm. support myself. I own a house. Like, I'm mm-hmm. good. I'm good to go. I, I, have, I have a dog. You mm-hmm. know, he's great. <laughs> and so I don't get, you know, I don't get lonely. But, um, you know, of course, everyone wants to, you know, have a great relationship and everything like that. But yeah, like, my boundaries are pretty set in stone at this point. So if... I don't feel it like I'm I'm out and I don't need to continue anything. So I, I think that, you know, in the it's helped me in that whole healing process from this horrible relationship to like where I am now where I'm like, I'm cool being alone. But if I'm going to be with somebody, then they really have to add to my life. And I see the red flags mm-hmm. probably too well, I think. Right. Yeah. You know, right I, away, I feel I'm that like, way too. Well, that's a red mm-hmm. flag. OK, that's a red flag. I mm-hmm. guess I'm out. You know, yeah. I, don't, <laughs> yeah. I don't need to fix anyone. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm way too old to try to fix someone. Mm-hmm. You're you know? not old, by the way. But anyway, <laughs> well, in the context of fixing someone, I took a long time to fix myself. So I'm good. <laughs> okay. What about you, Jake? My eyes are wide open to so many of the dangers out there now after we've covered these cases. And and to be fair, most of our cases are females that have Mm. been victimized by males. Mm -hmm. So my perspective automatically is is different going Mm -hmm. into this. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you I'm already a cautious and safe person to begin with. Mm. But this might have turned me up to like 10 on on the scale. Uh, And especially how I promote and how I sort of – engage into potential relationships or dating. I'm single as well. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed that uh, there are certain things now that I'm a lot more cautious of getting into these things. Well, basically for me, it's I will post the location very generically. I will post way after that because I've had scenarios where I posted something and people have shown up. Uh, on on the location on social media. Wait, so you're going out for brunch and you yeah. post, I'm going to King's Road Cafe or whatever, yeah. and then the person shows up. Yeah, and uh, now granted, it's somebody. It's now granted, it's somebody. Why does I, that never happen to me? Where well, like, I, I need to tag like one of the Hemsworth this, brothers. And be like, I am here right now. Please, no. Right, so, uh, I'm see, ordering dessert. The, Sorry, <laughs> I'll be here for another the, four hours in case it takes you a while to get yeah. here. Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm making light. Right. No, 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 no. But it's it's one of those factors. Like all these things now set into play, and I think that one of the most difficult things I think for me is you know, as you know, like mm-hmm. love tends to be very blind to so many dangers mm-hmm. out there, and when your heart is being tugged in one direction and emotionally you're sort of wrapped up in this, you kind of want to go out there not being protected. You want to be open. Right. Right? You really want to be open to either receive love or receive intimacy or whatever you're looking for. Assume the best. Look for the best. Not Jamie. Well, that's what we're told. I'm not fast. I'm not real fast. (laughs) That's what we're told though, right? Right. We're told if you have to be open. If you're not open for love, don't expect it. Right. And you know this from all the shows that you've done. Mm -hmm. It's like how infidelity comes into that and how these things come into play and why people seek affairs and why they seek this. So for me – it has really opened my eyes to what it, some of those things, but also to I, I also can't. I am so cautious and I'm so safe in so many aspects that a lot of my female friends turn to me for safety advice right. in terms of what to do, what not to do. Is this a red flag? Is this not a red flag? And so I find myself sort of, um, you know, dispatching a lot of the advice and a lot of the things that I've learned on the show. I haven't had the opportunity to listen to a ton of your episodes, but what I have listened to, I've definitely already learned something by listening to Strictly Stalking. 
and you further that, Jamie, it's look closely at your friends who talk about their relationships, understand that they might be going through abuse or infidelity that can escalate to stalking and other bad behaviors. Be attentive to your friends. And I can think of two or three right now that are going through my mind. I'm like, I could see how this could happen to her. Mm-hmm. So I've, I've, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I've learned from listening to Strictly Stalking. Thank you so much for coming on to Cheating When Love Lies. Jamie Beebe and Jake Deptula. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to Cheating When Love Lies. Please continue to subscribe, rate, and share. And I always love to hear from you at JillianHamilton.online. Thanks so much for listening. See you next time. All month long, the biggest movies are streaming free on Pluto TV's Popcorn Summer Movies. Watch star-studded blockbusters like Titanic and Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. Or fall in love with charming rom-coms like Hitch and How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. The best part? Pluto TV is 100% free. No credit cards, not even a sign-up. Plus, Pluto TV has hundreds of channels with thousands more movies, TV shows, and more. Download the Pluto TV app on all your favorite devices and start streaming now. Pluto TV. Drop in. Watch free. I'm Jamie Beebe. And I'm Jake Diptula. We're the host of the Strictly Stalking podcast. Strictly Stalking is a true crime podcast that explores stalking stories told by the survivors in their own words. Join us every Tuesday as we interview survivors, advocates, and experts to give you a deep dive into the workings of a stalking case. Would you know where to turn if you or someone you know is being stalked? We'll also give you the resources to fight back, know your rights, and get justice. Find Strictly Stalking wherever you listen to podcasts from Podcast One.